With the July 30th trade deadline for Major League Baseball quickly approaching, it's no secret that the Chicago White Sox are going to be sellers. And it's unfortunate for Chicago White Sox fans, but it's most likely Luis Robert Jr., Gary Crochet, and maybe a couple of other people are going to be traded. I've been hearing that the L.A. Dodgers are one of the teams that's looking at both of these guys. We're going to talk about it right after the intro. To the number one place for all Chicago baseball. Let's start the show. What's the word, Chicago baseball fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago White Sox Central. I am your host, Big Broski. And hey, listen, go ahead, hit us up. Let us know down below what y'all think about this situation with the White Sox. Getting rid of the basically the only bright spots on the team, with the exception of Paul DeJong, Tommy Pham, even though he's almost 40, Andrew Vaughn. Let us know what y'all think down below in the comments section. Hit us up all over social media from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook and uh, Twitter. And then, of course, you can go ahead, like, follow, and share right here on YouTube. I'm your boy, Big Bro. And it's been difficult. It's been difficult to talk about the White Sox and the Cubs, honestly. Uh, rooting for two last place teams is tough, even though the Cubs are only about three games out of the last wild card spot. They just haven't inspired much uh, lately besides, you know, anger. Uh, especially the way they lost last night with a walk-off walk to lose. But here, we're here to talk about Luis Robert Jr. We've been doing a a few episodes lately about where he should go. And uh, the latest team to pop up, according to the Athletics, Ken Rosenthal, Patrick Mooney, and Katie Wu, the Dodgers like Luis Robert Jr. and Gary Crochet. All right, so speaking of Gary Crochet, man, he still leads – the, uh, the American League in strikeouts with 130. Um, he's pitching way more than he ever has after coming into the league out of Tennessee. Shout out to Tennessee for winning the College uh, World Series, by the way. Um, and he's been up and down, in and out of uh, you know the majors. And this season, he's basically caught fire. Now he's truly an ace. Um, he's 6-6 six and six, uh, right now with the White Sox, I believe. And with a 3.2... ERA, 3.25 ERA, but 130 strikeouts. So the Dodgers are salivating because they've suffered a bunch of injuries. Now, we know they're one of the best teams in the league, but they're they're looking at the players on the White Sox. So, um, you know, the report um, from Ken Rosenthal and company also mentioned that the White Sox have assigned top scouts to focus on the farm systems of the Dodgers, the San Diego Padres, we'll talk about in a later episode, and the Seattle Mariners, which also we'll talk about in a later episode, uh, noting that all three teams have shown interest in multiple Chicago White Sox players currently rostered. So now, if, um, now, you know, if the Dodgers had their choice, they would take Crochet uh, and uh, Luis Robert Jr. Um, Right now, the rotation in L.A. is jacked up. Uh, 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 Walker Bueller and Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who was, you know, right there, um, you know, for the taking, coming over here from Japan, uh, even though the Cubs got a great, great player in Imanaga. Yamamoto was up there, too. Um, anyhow, they're injured, so their their pitching staff is in limbo right now. And even though they're far and away the best team in the NL West, they could use help. Now, the the thing the thing is though, Luis Robert Jr. is struggling right now. He started the season injured. Uh, he's only played in twenty five games. He's batting under two hundred. He does have seven home runs in ninety one at bats, so it's not too bad. But my man's it needs to heat up for the Cubs for the White Sox to be able to get a good return from the Dodgers because currently. Right now, uh, Mookie Betts is out for about six to eight weeks. Max Muncy is out as well. Um, You know, so they they definitely need an extra bat in their lineup. So what could the White Sox get back from the Dodgers in a trade that would give up two of their, let's say, four best players? It's not that many good players on the White Sox roster right now. So. I've been looking into their farm system, and their top five players are Dalton Rushing, Josua De Paula, Nick Frasso, a right-handed pitcher, R- River Ryan, a right-handed pitcher, and Kyle Hurt, a right-handed handed pitcher. Now, 
We already had a dude on our team named Aaron Bummer. I do not want to have to rely on a pitcher whose name is Kyle Hertz. Stay away from him. But besides from that, besides that, they would listen. Getting Dalton rushing would be great. Joshua DePaula, who apparently is related to Stefan Marbury and Sebastian Telfair out of Brooklyn, but by way of the Dominican Republic, this guy is a stud, an outfielder of the vein of. No, I won't. I wouldn't say he's as good as Ellie De La Cruz, but he does work out with him. He is. He has shown that he can hit that ball. He's batting two eighty four. 396 and 372 in single A as an 18-year-old last season. Bananas at 18 years old. And because he was called up, because he went to uh, single A so late, he would have been in top five in hitting and on base percentage against a bunch of 23, 24, 25-year-olds had he not just fallen short of qualifying for those types of uh, accolades. But my man is left-handed. He's built to hit, according to his scouting report. Um, he definitely recognizes pitches, and he has quality swing decisions. He spent the offseason training with not just Ellie De La Cruz, but Juan Soto as well. And he added significant muscle to his six foot three frame. Look at this. This guy is six foot three, 185 pounds. He's only 19 years old. So we're definitely going to see him get bigger and stronger. And the White Sox would be taking a flyer on this guy and investing in him for the next couple of years before he would even sniff the majors. But he does have hidden ability, his bat speed and strength, and he could. They, they're projecting him to develop into a 300 hitter with 30 plus home runs every single season. And you know what that sounds like? That sounds like somebody that's already on the roster. Aloy Jimenez. That's what the White Sox expected from him: 300 batting average in that range and 30 plus home runs year in and year out. But what we get from him is injuries every year every year so i like him i also like dalton rushing my man's is six foot one 220 pounds left-handed batter throwing right hand and he plays first base and catcher now what i do like about him is his versatility especially at the plate he can hit home runs he can hit for contact the dude is really good and he's developing his catching abilities he's only tw he's 23 years old so he's expected to be a player if the White Sox decided to trade with the Dodgers he's expected to be a player that would be on the opening day roster next season maybe even this fall if the White Sox make noise at the trade deadline now you could take your pick of the you know of the pitchers um all of them are ready to come up uh Nick Frasso River Ryan I would not go with Kyle Hurt, though, just because of his last name. I'm pretty sure he's really good. Um, but Nick Frasso, 25 years old, righty, out of um, – he was drafted by Toronto back in 2020. Uh, and here he is at six foot five, 200 pounds. My man is a beast, a beast. And he has a strong fastball between 94 and 97. And he can hit some 100s with his sidearm joint. And the guy has a mid-80s changeup. So if you're going to get rid of um, Garrett Crochet and Luis Robert Jr., it doesn't hurt plucking players from the L.A. Dodgers farm system. It would be great if they can get three or four of these top five prospects from these guys, preferably De Paula, Rushing, and Frasso, the top three. Um, I think the Dodgers would be willing to part ways with all three of those guys for Luis Robert Jr. and Gary Crochet because they are in win-now mode. You already know this. They are in win-now mode. Okay? So I'm not I'm, – listen, I am not uh, – I'm not I'm not too upset with the possibility – of the um of Luis Robert Jr. going to another team. Now the, the White Sox did say that they were going to, you know, try to keep him and build around him, but we already know. We already know. And then going to play with Shohei Otani, that has to be a dream. Like the way players dream or dreamt of playing with LeBron or dream or dreamt of playing with Curry, you gotta want to play with Shohei Otani. The guy is a monster. And it would be cool to see uh, Luis Robert Jr. play for a winning team. Let's just be honest. 
Uh, and it would be cool to see Gary Crochet maximize his potential in a franchise that cares about winning. Let's just be 100. The White Sox are not built to last right now. In fact, they're built to be in last, which they've been in since day one of the season. So White Sox talking to not only the L.A. Dodgers, but the San Diego Padres and the Mariners. We'll talk about those guys later. But let us know what y'all think. Should the White Sox trade with Luis, <laughs> trade Luis Robert Jr. and Gary Crochet or and or Gary Crochet to the L.A. Dodgers for prospects? Maybe a couple of players that's already on the major league roster as well, or you know, some draft picks or whatever. Uh, but because I'm not too familiar with how these things work with baseball, I'm you know, basketball and football are my top two uh, sports. Baseball is a um, running third, and they're not too far behind. But I don't necessarily know the inner workings of how the draft picks situation works for the uh, for baseball. But if they can get draft picks, if they can get uh, prospects, players, if they can start this rebuilding process leading into this supposed new stadium that they want to get in a couple of years, I'm saying go for it. Uh, Chris Getz and company need to go ahead and make something happen because, again, I don't like being depressed in the summer. There's too much sunshine, too many great things to do. Uh, but with both, both baseball teams being in last place, it's been no fun. It's been no fun rooting for this White Sox team. And honestly, I would much rather root for a bunch of young guys uh, like Corey Lee. Um, I, I enjoy Corey Lee. He's one of my favorite players on on the White Sox to be 100. Uh, you know, he's he's a great catcher. He definitely can hit the ball as well uh, with um, how many home runs he got. I think he got seven for home runs, which is, tie, which is third or tied for third. Uh, on the team. And then I, I like Paul DeJong. I want to see more of this guy. This guy is the one that's just not scared. He's 30, but you know, he he's not necessarily young, but he definitely has been showing leadership qualities. And I, I enjoy the fact that Andrew Vaughn has pretty much turned his season around. But aside from that, there's not too many bright spots on this team. And uh, unfortunately for Luis Robert Jr., you know, he's got to go. He's an asset that uh, can turn the White Sox into a team that that has better players uh, within the next two or three seasons as opposed to how things look right now. And as much as Gary Crochet has stepped up to the plate and filled in admirably for Dylan Cease, um, I, I didn't expect them to be trying to trade him or shop him this season. But it is what it is. It's, you know, baseball is a business as well as a sport. So, hey, go out there and get what you can for these guys. Uh, sell high. Uh, and hopefully, 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 Larice Roberts Jr. picks it up at the plate, hits a few more home runs, hits, get his, gets his average to like, you know, 225, 250, and uh, maybe the Dodgers will be willing to bite. All right, y'all already know how it is. It feels good to be back. It feels good to be back. I'm not going front. I appreciate you guys for uh, for being patient with me. It's been a, a pretty busy summer for your boy, and um, the other guys have been pretty busy as well. But Go ahead, hit us up at 773-389-6954 or Chicago Baseball Central at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, leave us an email, and then we can talk about it right here on the show. All right, we appreciate you guys for all the love and support for the entire Shot Town Sports family. That includes the Chicago Bears, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Chicago Sky. Shout out to Angel Reese, Kennedy Carter and Company, Coach Spoon, Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, the Shot Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys and NBA Central, in which we will be live tomorrow night for day one of the NBA draft and most likely Thursday night for day two of the NBA draft as well with some follow-ups on Friday about the entire draft process. So come rock with your boys, me, myself, um, Hayes, Bobby, C-Dub, and Steve-O Speaks. Appreciate you guys for all the love and support. We're going to holler at y'all next time. Peace. To the number one.